In today's video, you're gonna learn how to make a dynamic title card using Meta Balls in Cinema 4D. Let's go. Hey everybody, it's Nick here again from grayscalegorilla.com, bringing you the tools, training, and tutorials to help make you a better motion designer. Now we have a really fun tutorial today all about making a dynamic title card sequence, but before we get started, if you're new to Cinema 4D, don't forget to check out our Intro to Cinema 4D series over on our website. I'm gonna link it up down below and right here on this YouTube video as well. All right, with that, let's head on into today's video. So by the end of today's tutorial, you're gonna be able to make this dynamic title card in Cinema 4D using dynamics, meta balls, and other parts of Cinema 4D you may not have played with yet. So stay tuned for this one. We jump into a lot of different techniques on this one. I know you're gonna enjoy it. So let's go in and let's get started right now. So here, uh, here's the tweet I got. And uh, uh, man, I'm gonna screw this name up as always, but Mondedestweds. Man, I'm gonna, sorry buddy. Uh, <clears throat> but he sent me this uh, Twitter message. He says, hey, tutorial idea. Uh, he sent me a link to this video here we're gonna watch. He says, can't figure out how this meta ball is disappearing and releasing its spheres. So let's take a look at this thing and see what he's talking about. <clears throat> and then we'll head on into cinema and see if we could recreate this. So you can tell this thing's right up my alley because there's spheres and meta balls and MoGraph stuff and it's short and uh, it's got a lot going for it. But it does this really cool thing where the meta balls kind of like react to each other first of all, but then they all kind of shrink down and fall. So first I thought, you know, this is probably two different systems. I tried to like kind of freeze frame it and stop it and look at how this is built. Uh, and my guess was that there was kind of a meta ball system and then it transitioned into more of just spheres falling on the ground separately, which it kind of might, but looking at it closer, it looks like it actually does to kind of transition from meta balls into normal spheres. So I had, I, I, I went into cinema and I started playing around and I think I figured out a cool way for this to happen. So let's head on in and rebuild this whole thing in Cinema 4D. And the first thing we need to do is grab a sphere. Uh, and this will be uh, what we use for the meta balls. And we need to drop the sphere into a MoGraph cloner object. And we just add it in there. And then I'm going to use a grid array and kind of shrink these spheres down. Grab the sphere, grab the shrink. There we go. So what you've probably seen other tutorials of mine or somewhere else using meta balls. What meta balls does is it takes a bunch of spheres, usually spheres. Sometimes it works with other objects. Um, but I think it prefers spheres. And it kind of makes it liquidy or globizes it. You know, it, it gives it this this look we're going for, this kind of cloudy, blobby, gel kind of thing. And uh, well, all we need to do is just drop this cloner of spheres into a meta ball, right? So we can go here, there's a meta ball. I'm gonna hold down Alt and it'll make an instant child. And you can see what it did was make this kind of big blob. Now. The meta ball is looking at all these spheres and it's creating kind of a new mesh based on, on that. Uh, based on that, and we have some settings here on the meta ball which allows us to like make it a little more globby or a little tighter. We could also use exponential fall off, which which gives us kind of a, a heavier effect. It's a, it's a tighter effect, and we could see also it's getting a little choppy, and this is because of the editor and render subdivisions. So. If you've seen this before, it'll be redundant, but let me make sure we understand that editor subdivisions is only for the editor and render subdivisions is for when you go to the picture viewer for your final render. So let's just do a quick render of this. I'm gonna hit shift R and it's gonna render out. And let me sh let me make the settings a little bit smaller. Uh, first of all, let's make this 16 by nine and I'm just gonna make this like 600 and see if that's a better fit for our window here. We could even go a little bit smaller, 500. Okay, so there we go. So now you can see there's a difference between the way that the viewport renders. Here's the viewport render. See how choppy and and like sharp edged it is. And then the uh, 
the picture viewer render is uh, a much more detailed and much rounder because there are two different settings. A lot of things have this, like particle emitters. They have kind of the working settings, which is here, and then they have the final render settings, which are here. And this is so you can actually look at this playback in real time in the editor, but then when you go to do your final render, you could kind of crank up the settings without having to go back and forth all the time. So first of all, we need to turn this down. We don't have to go all the way to five, but we do have to give a better impression of how these um, these meta balls are going to kind of interact. Uh, but right now, all we have is like a static cube of spheres here. And what we really need, if we look at our original, we'll be jumping back and forth to our original and back. You know, while we're doing this, um, this is how I approach this. You know, I get a question like this on Twitter and I just kind of pull up the video that they're talking about and think about ways to do it. And then I sit here and just analyze the video and see if we can't figure out how this is done backwards, kind of backwards engineer it. And this is how I try to learn a lot of new things, you know, uh, like always, you know, I'm, I'm learning with you guys. I don't know everything about Cinema 4D at all, um, but I could look at a project that's more simple like this and maybe take a guess at it. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, well, there's meta balls here and then there's a separate, um, kind of a separate system of meta balls. It comes down with a different texture that kind of interacts and it looks like it's actually dynamically pushing this, this white stuff around with the yellow stripes. You can see they kind of interact pretty well and then they shrink down into the spheres and then this other sphere rolls around so uh, if we look at what we have now and we turn on our meta ball that's not at all what we're looking for um, what we need is like a kind of blobby cloud moving around so let's get that going um, first of all let's turn off our meta ball just for now and on our cloner we're going to add an effector and a random effector and uh, we're going to go to the effector, and instead of the random mode, we want to use noise. Now, the reason we're using noise is because when we hit play on noise, it's going to move around. Uh, random is just kind of a static mode. Noise gives you the uh, ability to adjust your animation speed, <clears throat> excuse me, and your scale, and, and do some other stuff. So, you can notice one thing, uh, that they're all moving kind of in the same direction. So, you could click indexed, and now we're getting more of a random look to it. And uh, after that, we need to randomize more stuff. So let's go to the parameter and uh, rotation doesn't work because they're spheres, dummy. But we can go to uniform scale and we can just kind of make the scale wiggle as well. So now they're moving around. And I also want them to move more in the X direction like this. Because if we look at the original video, you can see we kind of have a wider uh, piece here and they're all kind of moving around. Now that's way too fast and that might be even too too far. So let's just turn this up a little bit. And then let's go back to our effector tab and turn down the animation speed like pretty low. Uh, that, that seems too slow. 40 seems maybe about right. Um, and we also need this wider. It's like kind of a wide... Um, it's kind of a wide uh, uh, system here. So let's just look at this first blob here. Let's pause it. It's kind of wider than it is tall, and we have these extra spheres hanging out. So let's build all this white stuff first, and then we'll introduce the the yellow and white stripes, and then we'll worry about the logo <clears throat> later. So we have kind of multi-steps here. Um, so from here, let's grab our cloner and make it a little bit wider and maybe add another set of spheres. And then let's turn on our meta ball and see what we get. So you can see now our meta ball is using those animated spheres and kind of you know pushing around. One thing I don't want them to do is collide. I want all these spheres to kind of have dynamics. And, and the reason I think that is because the way that these systems interact, the way that these yellow spheres and the, and the, and the white ones kind of move around together makes me think that they need a little bit of dynamics. So let's add some dynamics to our sphere. Um, I should say, I never say this enough uh, during tutorials, but I should say um, uh, that I'm using the studio version of Cinema 4D. Uh, so your dynamics may be different or um, some of the GI stuff we're getting into later might be a little bit different based on what version you have. Uh, but uh, if you have studio, everything should look the same. I should also say that we're using R15, uh, which I think this is the first R15 tutorial um, on the site. So uh, we're going to use a couple new things with global illumination. You will be able to pull this off in 14, uh, but some of the settings, if they're not there, it's probably because of version or uh, that you don't have studio. But just a heads up. Okay, so 
uh, with our meta ball, we're going to use sphere and we're going to simulation rigid body. And instantly we have all of our spheres explode and that's not what we want. We want them to stay in place. And uh, for that, we use follow position. So let's just give that 10. And that means that all these spheres kind of rotate uh, or, or, or move around and they respect each other's physical space, but they stay where I want them to and gravity is really not going to take hold. Um, we don't want that to happen until later. So now let's see what we got. We got meta balls here, and um, that's not looking at all like what we want. Uh, so we need to shrink our spheres, I think, a lot more. Um, let's try like something like 30, uh, not definitely not 3,000, and hopefully we didn't uh, just crash uh, cinema here. Let's see what happens. Okay, we're back. Uh, heads up, don't put 3,000 radius on your spheres when you're using meta balls because uh, your cinema will go crazy. But we're back, um, and uh, where were we? So we're shrinking the spheres a little bit, uh, and I think we're going to add quite a few more of these to kind of round out our blob. Because you can see they're kind of individual spheres right now. If we turn off our meta ball, it's kind of because they're not really touching. I want kind of a cluster of spheres all kind of bumping into each other. Um, so maybe we do have slightly larger ones and maybe we add quite a few more to this uh, system. And you can see we also lost our uh, uh, dynamics tag here during me fixing all this. So let me just add this back, rigid body, uh, follow position 10. Okay, so now we have, we turn on our meta balls, now we have more of like a cloud kind of thing sitting here. Um, but I think our hall value for our meta ball uh, is a little too globby. So if we tighten that up, we're getting a little bit more kind of close to where we want. And if we, we can also turn our editor subdivision lower and get an even better idea of what our render will look like. Be because remember, these are kind of two different systems. So let me turn this back up just for animating purposes. Um, and I think we kind of have a rough kind of cloud, maybe a little bit too many spheres. I'm going to reduce this down and then I'm going to shrink up all their axis so they're all kind of touching, uh, kind of getting closer to each other. You can see they're still kind of pretty far away and this looks better. So let's turn that on. Let's go to our random and uh, go to our parameter and maybe see if we can make them a little bit more random as well to get them a little bit more swirly and a little bit more cloudy. So this looks similar to what we got. Um, and this is kind of the base for our white uh, uh, kind of meta ball. So let's call this random white. Okay. So what we basically need is a second system of meta balls that kind of come into the middle and blow up and and give this kind of um, dynamic thing where this, this center system, this yellow system kind of blows up it from the middle and kind of pushes this white stuff around and, uh, and let's, uh, let's build that. So the easiest way I'm thinking we could do this is just to take this whole system, random white, the whole deal, copy and paste it. And that's going to give us a second meta ball system identical to the first one. And if we go into the cloner, we just want to make sure that the effectors has the new random on it. And so now we have two separate systems. We have this white system and now we have this yellow system. So let's call this random yellow so we could do different things to this. And we can also call this meta ball yellow and meta ball white. <clears throat> just so we can kind of keep things separate and understand what's what the differences are. So um, the problem is, is the dynamics uh, between the systems aren't working. We have two identical systems here, but as soon as I turn off the meta ball, you're going to see that we do have two separate dynamic systems kind of moving. So we could turn off this cloner, and you could see we have one, and we could turn on this one, we can have a different one. So with both of them running, uh, let me turn off both meta balls here, turn on both cloners, you can see what's happening is the meta ball is overriding the dynamics. Now, the spheres themselves are having dynamics within their, their own system, but they're not looking at this other one. The, somehow, and I'm not sure the exact fix, uh, except for something I'll show you in a minute, um, but these don't interact. Once they're in a, a meta ball, the meta ball kind of takes over, and their own dynamics work, but then the dynamics between the two don't. Um, so the, the way around this 
uh, from what I found, is to make the actual meta ball a dynamic system as well. So I go to tag, simulation tags, collider body, and uh, make the meta ball yellow system a kind of moving mesh collision. So if we go into here, we go to uh, shape, moving mesh, and we make sure that all this is on. So let's just make sure it's all working. And there we are. All right, so now we have uh, our, our meta ball itself should be interacting with the other system. So let's start to color these differently so we can make sure that it's working the way we want. So let's just create a new material. We'll keep this really simple at first. And we'll make one white new material We'll make a second one, and I'm gonna apply it to the meta ball itself. We'll just make the second one kind of yellow for now. And you can see now what we have are two different systems. Now, we're also getting a little bit <clears throat> of playback differences. The actual render will not show what's happening until we pause it. Um, and this could be a playback issue, it could be a meta ball thing. Meta ball is kind of an old system, it's been in cinema for a long time. So there could be some playback issues with it. Uh, I just noticed these things where it doesn't really show until you pause. So just keep that in mind. Uh, the other thing that it will show is if you do a real render, it will actually render out the system um, <clears throat> properly in the picture viewer. You can see it does have to calculate all the dynamics and prepare everything and kind of do all the dynamics all the way up to frame 38, which is why it takes a little bit of time. Uh, but once it gets going, then it can do the rest of the frames. So we're gonna let that sit and make sure that's doing okay. Um, but we should be, uh, okay, so we, we basically have the basics of our system. We have our yellow spheres kind of coming down. And we also know that these yellow, this yellow system is larger. So we could grab this and kind of crank it up and now they're gonna interact and kind of push each other out of the way quite a lot. Um, <clears throat> we also d know that this system isn't as blobby and it doesn't have as many spheres in it. The reason why is because these kind of look like spheres already. You can see when they come down, you know, if we kind of count up the spheres in the system, you can kind of see them. There's one here, they're bigger than the small white ones. There's one here, 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 here. There's like only six of them total or so, maybe eight. So we can go to our cloner object and let's turn off our uh, meta ball for now and just turn off the whole other system and realize that we just have too many spheres here. So let's go to our cloner, go to our object and set this to like two, three, two or something really small. So now we have kind of a less spheres happening. Um, maybe, uh, maybe there's three across, but we know that they're way larger in scale. So there we go. So now we have some much larger um, meta balls. And let's turn on the system and talk about getting that in a rounder situation. Because now it's just a blob. It doesn't look have that spherical round blob. Um, it doesn't have the really clear difference between all the spheres that we see in the video. So the way we could kind of play with that is mess with the hull value. Maybe it doesn't have exponential fall off. Um, Maybe it does. So, you know, this looks closer to what that video is like this. You could kind of see the spheres wrapped in this kind of blanket almost, you know. Um, either that's how I see it. So this is more of our uh, yellow system. And we also have our own random yellow that allows us to animate this differently. And if we look at the animation of the original, you could see the white ones kind of float around and then these big ones have a big kind of bigger, slower movements, it looks like to me. So, you know, we, we started by making the spheres larger, and we can also kind of slow the system down, but then add more movement to the whole thing and really try to make this a different looking system than our white one. So there's, we're playing around with the, uh, I'm gonna speed this up as well. There we go. I'm gonna also play with the whole value and kind of move it down and make sure that you hit pause every once in a while to make sure that your system's looking the way you want it to. So you can see every time we hit pause, it does look different than when it's playing back. Um, so let's see, we could turn down the scale, uh, you know, like 0.9. That way they're not scaling as much. Now the spheres are just scaling a little bit. Um, 
And I think we may have either two large spheres or too many, because when we hit pause, you can see how large it is, how far they kind of stick out there. And uh, we don't want that. So the random, we can kind of tone down. We want them to be a little bit closer to each other. And we want them to kind of be closer to each other. So let's pull them in. Let's pull them down. And let make, make sure that when we hit play, there we go, that now we have more of a round sphere system. Okay, so let's turn the other ones back on. Let's go back to the beginning and see what we got. Now, when we hit pause, you can see that the yellow system is kind of pushing the white out of the way. And this is exactly what the behavior we're getting in this video. So we have our yellow, boom, pushing the white out of the way, and then we drop into spheres. All right, so it's really rough right now. And we have a lot of tweaking to do and kind of scaling. So let's get our scale right. Um, and let's just do a uh, an animation for our yellow system to kind of animate on. Because you can see what's happening is we have our white <clears throat> and then a piece of yellow like clay falls into the center. And then it kind of explodes out into this yellow white sphere thing. And we have to make that happen. We have to animate that coming on. So one way we could do this is animate the spheres growing and animate the actual system growing, maybe the cloner object. So let's go ahead and do that. Somewhere around like frame 30, let's say. Let's say it starts, goes for a second, and then the yellow stuff explodes. So let's grab our uh, sphere, first of all, and animate backwards because we already have our sphere size that we want. Radius, 100, that's fine. We can uh, set a keyframe for that. I'm going to hold down Command, and I'm going to click this red button right here, that's going to set a keyframe right on our timeline. And that means we can go backwards now to frame 30, let's say, and just scale this all the way down to zero. So no sphere scale means no cloner, means no meta ball, which means it just basically doesn't exist. And you can see what happens is it grows, boom, right over time. Now, what we're not seeing is it push everything away, but it is actually doing that. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that we want the we want the center object. So let me turn off that this system for now, real quick. There we go. So let's remove that secondary dynamics tag and make sure um, that it's working on its own. And maybe we'll add that that physical push later. Um, right now, what's happening is the mesh itself is not pushing the other mesh around. It's only the spheres that are pushing other spheres around. So this is really the way that the, the meta balls are, are interacting right now. And so we'll see how that looks. We may have to add that secondary dynamics tag, but let's delete it for now because I think we're getting an okay look with just these two. You can see the center ones are pushing in and, and, and making these white ones kind of swirl around here. Um, so now we have our kind of general scale up. The other thing I want to do is scale up our cloner object. Um, and by that, I mean I want this size of our cloner object to kind of scale with these things. So they start in the center and then push all the yellow, all the white stuff out. And the way we do that is we do it again. We do, Let's do this backwards. We already have the scale proper for our yellow meta ball. So we could set a keyframe at 40, back up to 30, and then just scale all this down to like something like 50, something small. Not all the way to zero, but pretty small. So now it's going to kind of... The spheres will be born in the center of this yellow stuff and then push it out. That's the way we want it to look. We want it to look like it's coming from the inside, just like that. See how it's pushing out there? And we can see how this looks if we go to our render settings and go to our output and just say all frames. Let's just do uh, a quick render. And you can see it's rendering a higher quality um, Meta ball mesh because of those settings that we set earlier. Remember, we set editor subdivision and render subdivision. It's actually rendering with the render subdivision now. And you can see right around now, uh, right around frame 30, we're going to start to see these yellow spheres pop up and push out. Blah, cool. So there they go. And now we can see what that looks like and make sure that all of this looks right before we start texturing everything. So um, let's have it catch up. Cool. So it's a little fast. It's a little aggressive. I, I like it a little bit slower. So let's go to our view 
and let's grab our timeline and move it up. Now, if your timeline's not down here, uh, you can just go to Window, Timeline, and drag it into the interface down here. Um, but you can see we have Cloner and Sphere, and we have all these keyframes set for our Cloner and Sphere. And I'm just going to grab our second set of keyframes, which are on frame 40, and just pull them out a little bit. So I'm just going to make it last. Uh, uh, it's like a longer transition. So now it goes a little bit slower. So now it's over the course of 20 frames instead of 10, and I think that'll be okay. Okay, so now what do we do about this piece of kind of clay that starts off this animation? This this yellow blob that falls in, and then and then it looks like it pu punches everything out of the way, and it, and it kind of explodes. What do we do there? Well, let's just make a separate system. We don't have things don't have to um, things don't actually have to look the way that they look in the animation. For instance. Your brain may say, well, this little yellow thing comes down, and then it's the actual thing that explodes into this yellow thing. And that's fine, but why can't we just fake it and have two separate objects, one that falls into the middle, and then we animate that other thing up? So let's just do it that way. That way we'll have more control over it, and we're not trying to texture and animate two different textures and do anything. Uh, we could just grab a sphere. Let me move this back down so we can see what's going on. We could just take this sphere, let's move it up, and kind of transform this into that piece of clay. So let's take a look at it. Almost got it. Let's play pause, play pause. There it is. It's just like this little chunk of Play-Doh or something. So let's grab our sphere. Let's go to our um, uh, deformers and add a displacer deformer. I'm going to hold shift and it's going to automatically add it to our sphere. And I'm going to grab our displacer and go to shading and go to shader, noise. And uh, we can also, let's set a camera out you know where we want this but then we'll turn our camera off and zoom in so we can kind of set up the sphere let's go to our noise and um, let's go to our object and just really crank it up we kind of want to make this a big blobby piece of play-doh whatever but you can see we first of all don't have enough geometry so we can set it to something that has more geometry or more even geometry and then we can also uh, turn up our segments so you can see our noise is just too small. It's like making these shards. If we go to our displacer, go to shading, go to noise, and just change the scale from 100 to something like 1,000, now we have a piece of clay. Look at that, almost perfect. So like this little moldy, not moldy, molded, um, you know, little chunk of Play-Doh, whatever, it almost looks identical. Look at that, it's got a little pinch in the middle. This is awesome, that works great. Now, if your settings didn't work, <clears throat> excuse me, if your settings weren't as perfect, Adjust your global scale around until you get something that looks like that. Uh, the larger the scale, the more blobby this this will be. And um, that's probably a good start. So now it's a little too large. Let's grab our sphere and just scale it down. It was something like this size. We could also rotate it um, or, or rotate the displacer or actually just rotate the texture and that'll rotate it around as well. Um, but let's go back to our regular camera and animate this thing coming in. So somewhere around here, it needs to look like it falls in. So that'll be the bottom piece of that animation. Uh, so yellow falling sphere, let's name it. Look at me naming layers. Wow, I'm such a, I uh, never do that. Um, there's just so many, there's gonna end up, we're gonna end up with so many similar things around here that we've gotta make sure we're, we're animating the right stuff. So let's grab our a move tool and animate this in. So right here is where we want it to fall in right when that starts to explode it around you know 30 35 we want this to fall in <clears throat> I'm gonna push it back a little so it looks so it looks like it's inside and I'm gonna set a keyframe I'm gonna set a position keyframe for falling sphere I'm gonna go to coordinates and on the y-axis I'm gonna hold down command and set a keyframe we're gonna go backwards and start at let's say frame 18 or so we can always change this and just move it up and now we set another keyframe for Y and we hit play and we see what that looks like. So it looks like it's a little delayed. It looks like we could probably move these forward. I'm just grabbing it right on the timeline. And now we have the look of uh, this falling. So let's duplicate this yellow layer and add it to our falling sphere. And that's because we're, we're going to end up having two different textures. We're going to have the texture for the striped yellowed and then the regular yellow. So we can actually start naming these too. So falling and uh, stripes, right, and white. Boom. 
Okay, so now we have our rough animation. We have our piece of clay falling in and we, we can maybe retime that so it looks a little bit more like gravity. Uh, we could do that by going to our timeline and uh, going to our F curves and grabbing our falling sphere and then just giving it more of a gravity curve. Right now it has a default, um, let's see if we could push this out of the way, we can't, it's okay. You'll have more room on your screen. Um, I just have my teeny uh, tutorial screen on, so we're a little tight on room, but I think we could do it. Right now we have our default kind of ease in and out curve, and gravity looks, you know, like kind of like if you threw a baseball, what it would look like in midair, that's kind of a gravity curve. It's falling and it's falling slow at first and then it speeds up over time and so now we can look at this and it looks uh, it looks a little aggressive there we go so now the, it's got more of a natural falling um look to it let's zoom in and see what that looks like it's kind of slower at first and then it has a little bit more velocity as it comes down and uh you know we really can't see what this looks like with our um with with uh, with our playback because it's not playing back properly. So we could do a, a test render. The other thing we have to do, by the way, is turn off our sphere once it falls. Once it's inside, right around there, we could just turn it off. And the way we do that is we go to our sphere, we go to um, uh, basic, uh, and we can just say visible in render. We can just animate this right away. Um, it's not the best thing to do because then then you can't actually toggle this on and off using your your checkboxes um, so you can also use like a compositing tag to turn it off but uh, I, I, I tend to use this quite a lot you know just kind of turn off that that layer uh, visibly um, and then it, it just is totally off to the, the simulation and everything so let's just do that visible and renderer we're gonna say on at frame uh, the frame after it falls at frame 40 we'll say visible and render on animate that go to the next frame and uh, then we'll say off Whoops, visible and renderer, off, boom. Okay, so now it's just not there. Um, and uh, so now we can play this back. I hit Shift R, I'm gonna say yes, and it's gonna start rendering this. And uh, it's gonna give us a rough idea of how this looks. So sooner than later, we're gonna start to see this yellow thing fall from the sky. I think right around frame 20 or so. Should be coming any second. I'll just have a little sip of coffee while we're waiting. Mm. Ice coffee. There's our little blob. Oh, you can see it's a little late. You can see that. You can see our stuff start to kind of explode out there before it falls, and that's why we're doing this full test here, so we can we can make sure we got it right. It also seems a little slow. It seems a little slow mo this fall. So let's uh, speed that up. Uh, this way and this way so it looks like it's hitting at the right time uh, yeah so let's go this way and this way and then instead of rendering everything uh, and waiting for it let's just start at frame 20 so let's go to render settings output from 20 to 90 say yes render yes render go ahead so now it's going to calculate up to 20 it'll just take a few seconds to prepare all the dynamics <clears throat> and then now we're here here comes our yellow and then we could check our timing a little bit better like this plonk look at that now it looks like it explodes out and the other thing i want is for this white uh metaball system to really look like it's being pushed out more i know i know it actually is but a little bit more of a kick i think will make this look a lot nicer so for instance um Let's just expand our meta ball system, the size of it, and, and kind of cheat it and push it out as this starts to expand. So let's find where this yellow stuff falls, or actually right where this yellow thing falls and hits. Um, we're pushing out, and, and it, it's almost like I'm nitpicking stuff, but all those little things um, make this piece what it is you know it's this really short piece but it has a lot of nice little dynamics to it we have our white cloud mining its own business and then here comes this yellow thing and then it gets pushed out it's like it's affected so much look at all these spheres around here that just kind of get pushed out and it and it becomes a larger system once this yellow stuff pops in right so it goes boom so let's let's cheat that a little bit let's give that you know maybe a little sound hit will help that in the final render but you know, any visual cue, you can 
kind of cheat that animation, those little subtle things will, will help the system. So again, if we look at our, our basic one, you know, boom, it, it does pop open, but it doesn't have that ag aggression that the original has. So let's find that frame when this falls in. Let's take our white Metaball cloner and just add more kind of like out for it, right? So one thing we may have to do is add a few more um, spheres just so we could spread this out without it affecting too much. But right around here, let's just set a keyframe for size. Uh, and actually, uh, we'll just set it right here. Boom, keyframe, size, and then we'll push forward as this explodes out and we'll just expand that white system out a lot more. And this will give it even more of a of a kind of explosion. See all those see all that white pushed out? Boom. Right? And because they're dynamic, uh, we're gonna see some dynamics floating around, and we're also gonna add one separate extra system to even push this further. And uh, the way we'll do that is just start from scratch. Cloner will set up a really simple system. Cloner sphere, cloner grid array, uh, let's say two by two by two. And we're just gonna spread this out. And these are gonna be kind of random little spheres out on the on the edge. If we shrink these down, let's give them the white material so they match. These guys are like these these little outside spheres that give a sense of motion as this yellow comes down. You can see them animate right there. See them? That's what we want. That's those guys that I think are gonna help sell this. So first of all, let's add another random effector and play around with our scale here. Um, we can go to, uh, we don't, well, we do want the position to random, randomize. We do want the scale to randomize uniformly. And we probably want them a little bit smaller. So let's just shrink these down. And, um, what else? So let's see what this is. We need them to be dynamic. So let's just drag one of these dynamics tags up on top of it. I held down command so it made a copy. So now they're part of a physical system. You're going to see them react and move around. Uh, we also have to tell this random effector to be a noise effector indexed and um, and let's say slow down our animation speed a little bit. Now I'm going to push these uh, push this random effector kind of higher on the X axis so it moves around and a little bit more on on, on uh, P and, uh, Y and Z as well. And you can see now they kind of just float out on the outside and act like their own little system, but they're also being pushed by the dynamics, um, maybe a little bit smaller. And this is, again, just a separate system. Let's uh, tone this down. We're just changing this as we're looking at it. It looks a little fast to me. Let's slow it down. And... Um, yeah, so that's it. That's all they do, basically. Uh, I want the random to be a little bit more on X and Y to really have them fly around. And, heck, maybe even more on the scale. So let's move this up. And uh, I want them to not react as tightly to where they want to sit. So let's go to force and follow position and make them maybe a little bit less. So now when they get bumped, they're going to be kind of moving around a little bit more. And let's do a quick render. So now I'm rendering to our picture viewer and I can pause our outside render and um, now we're just seeing what this looks like. So we have our spheres kind of floating around and any minute now our yellow is going to fall down. Good. And get pushed. Blah. Sweet. And it's scaling up. <clears throat> And they're being pushed into the secondary system. And this is getting close. So now at this point, we we have our kind of rough motion, but we have no texturing, we have no lighting. Um, and this is where, right around here, is where I start to look at this picture viewer and start to go, man, that looks ugly. Um, and you know, maybe I should finish the animation in this kind of normal mode, but it's right around here where I just get kind of like ticked off at seeing ugly plastic, uh, um, renderings on black and I start to go like, okay, well, let's light this thing and see and, and start to play around with that. I like the lighting aspect of things and this looks really pretty. So like, let's, let's start building this. So, um, the way we're going to do this is a mixture of, uh, Lightkit Pro and HDRI Studio Pack. And 
let me show you what we'll, what we'll use. Um, first of all, we need a backdrop. So you can see it kind of looks like it's sitting on a psych here. We have a backdrop um, down and then it's kind of sweeping forward and we have our nice shadows here. Um, so with that, I'm gonna use um, a uh, Light Kit Pro, which is right here. And I'm gonna go into Sykes and I'm gonna use Studio S and just push it down a little bit, maybe scale it up. And uh, this will kind of serve as our main uh, backdrop for the for the animation. We can kind of center this. We could always tweak this later, but uh, that'll be our main kind of backdrop. So now we have a white backdrop here to uh, to animate on, and uh, we're also going to use the new global illumination that's part of R15. Uh, and so for that, we're going to need an HDRI. So I'm going to go over to HDRI Studio Pack and um, add the HDR Studio Rig. And we don't need the floor because we already have our psych. Uh, we can go to our seamless floor controls and just say turn off floor and uh, and then we're fine. So now we have our HDRI and that's gonna light our scene um, exclusively. The HDRI is going to take the light from the HDR and kind of project it onto our scene. And with the new global illumination uh, settings, you're gonna see it renders pretty quickly um, using just an HDRI, uh, an HDR and uh, and um, the new GI. So let's get that set up really quickly. Uh, let's go to our render settings. Uh, let's use our physical render and um, let's use global illumination. So there'll be another tutorial where I go into more detail in fact, uh, at half res, I did a little bit of a tutorial on some of the new GI stuff and what it is. <clears throat> but in this video, we'll, we'll kind of go quickly through it. But I hope to have a more comprehensive GI video pretty soon. So keep an eye out for that. But what we have are presets. We, we didn't really have these presets before. And uh, one of my favorite new presets is interior preview high diffuse depth. And this is a very fast rendering uh, GI uh, setting. Uh, usually for final render, I'll go to uh, interior high, high diffuse depth instead of preview. And this gives you a little bit more accurate uh, solver. But for testing it out, this looks really nice. Um, I'm just going to leave it all on defaults for now. You're going to see light mapping is turned on. We have a ton of bounces, which means all this light bounces around the scene. And um, we can go back to our view and just do a quick render. And you can see now it's going to use that GI light to light our scene. So uh, we have a long way to go to kind of set this up for, for the final render, but um, let's start to texture and, and get everything together so this starts to look more like this. And uh, so the first thing we need to do is go to our original white kind of floating texture here, make it full white, and add some reflection. I'm gonna add it for now, and I'm going to turn it way down. It doesn't. It's not crazy reflective. I'm gonna turn down our overall reflection and our Fresnel, so just so we have a little bit of gloss. And I'm gonna add some blurriness to our reflections. And uh, adding blurriness, you know, does increase render time. But with physical render, it actually um, isn't too much of a render hit, and it looks really nice. So all, already we have start to have some really nice reflections here on our white system, and uh, now our yellow system needs that. <clears throat> excuse me, that uh, yellow and white striped kind of thing going on. So let's grab the stripes texture. Let's go to the color channel, go to texture, surfaces, checkerboard. Let's go in and instead of having checkerboard across and down, we don't want any across, we only want it down. And uh, let's take that black and make it yellow instead. There we go. And uh, let's make more... Uh, frequent stripes and uh, then let's adjust it so if we look at our final here it looks like all the stripes are kind of pushing up toward upper camera uh, left and kind of pointing towards the camera just a little bit <coughs> excuse me so the way we do that is we grab our texture tag that's on our meta ball and instead of spherical projection um, well, actually, spherical should probably work. So we could just grab the sphere now and grab our rotation and anim and move it and kind of rotate the the texture around until it's facing the right way. So now you can see it's kind of pushing up um, into the top corner, and uh, it's still not grabbing this right. So instead of instead of um, spherical projection, let's try a flat projection. 
So let's grab our texture again and go to flat. And that's more like that's more like this. So now it's really coming flat and I could just kind of tilt this forward and have these little points at the tops of the spheres and decide, you know, what angle this is sitting here. And uh, and then we could do a render and see what this looks like. While that's going, we can go turn on our reflection, do the same thing, add some Fresnel, tone it way down, add some blurriness, um, and uh, we're all looking pretty good here. So uh, let's just overwrite that. <clears throat> and now it's gonna do a real render here in the picture viewer. Um, wish I had a little bit more room, but that's okay. And we'll see how this looks. Aha, looking much better. So now we have um, some shadows showing up and let's look at our HDR and position it in a, in a, in a way that's gonna get us, I think slightly better shadows and really it's gonna match this scene a lot more. Um, Let's go to our HDR studio rig and go to our rig controls and turn on our preview on. So what the preview will show is, um, let me scale this up. Our preview is showing um, the HDR that's surrounding the scene. So this is giving us a preview of the HDR with a giant soft box off to the left here and two smaller ones off to the right. Uh, and I think it's a little bit more frontly lit. So we could just grab this rotation and, and rotate it around a little bit and uh, maybe make it a little bit brighter. And you can see it's actually affecting the preview as well, the, the brightness. So let's turn that up. And... Um, and of course, when we render this, it's not gonna render in the picture viewer. Uh, it's just there for kind of roughing out where your shadows and everything are. So now we have some nice shadows. We have some really nice GI <clears throat> shadows here where the yellow of our spheres is kind of pushing into the uh, color of the floor and the backdrops being all lit. It's a little bit bright. If we look at our, our kind of um, what we're trying to match, you can see the backdrop is a, is a lot darker than our white. Uh, spheres. You can also see it's still way too reflective. We turned it way down. I'm going to grab both of these at the same time, go to reflection and kind of tone it way down. So 2 and 15 or something like that. Um, and while we're at it, let's grab our psych material, uh, which is part of our studio, um, our psych, and we can go to our color and just tone this down, make it a little bit more gray. And uh, this should match. Let's go back to our camera. Let's turn off our preview and set up our scene. And I'm also gonna use a more of a close-up camera on this. We're kind of too far away. We could zoom in on it, but we're starting to lose some of that detail. Um, instead, let's grab a focal length of something like 60 or 50, and then that way we'll, we're gonna have a little bit more room and less floor to, to worry about. We can kind of zoom in closer to the system and not worry about it so much. So let's do a quick render here. Um, this isn't really accurate anymore, so let's just turn this off. Stop rendering, yes. Let's do a quick render in our preview. You, you can see it's gonna be low res, uh, but we're approaching um, a similar look. So let's tone down our backdrop a little bit more, make it a little bit darker so that white really pops off uh, uh, the, the backdrop there and really shows up a lot brighter. And um, it's looking okay, it's looking okay. So now let's finally talk about that thing that happens in the in the example where it all falls down into little baby spheres. It's really cool, right? And again, I thought about maybe having two separate systems, but this actually works pretty well if you just scale down the spheres and then turn off their follow position, which is making them kind of stay up in the air. So let's just pick something a little bit down the road here. This explodes out, and then it's very quick, and then right around maybe... 60, 70 frames, it all falls and shrinks and falls to the ground. So it's very quick. One, two, three. Like, that's a fast count. So it's like, you know, two seconds at the most. So if this pops up at, you know, 40 frames, or maybe around 70 frames, we're just going to have all this shrink down and fall to the ground um, uh, like spheres. So let's do that. Let's just animate it, and it'll give us a much more realistic... Um, result rather than try to like fake it with two uh, with another set of systems right and it'll look a lot better and if you've seen the example the final render uh from this you, it's a really cool effect so let's go ahead and do that <clears throat> we have to animate a lot of stuff here so make sure you're animating the right stuff 
first of all, we, we need to shrink all these spheres down to small spheres. Right now, if we turn off our metaball objects, um, we're, we're, we kind of have these different size spheres. We want them all to be this kind of rough scale, this small, smaller scale. So let's animate the scale first. So frame 70, let's say. I'm going to do this without the meta ball on. I'm just going to take our spheres and I'm going to take their current radius, which we've already animated up on this one, and just uh, hold command, make a keyframe, move forward, you know, maybe 10 frames, and then set this to something small like 15 spheres, 15 uh, centimeters, maybe a little bit larger. Let's just go to like 20. Uh, 24 looks okay, actually, for the size. And we will check this off uh, and oh, I'm sorry set another keyframe so now they're big here comes the big guys and then they shrink down that's it and hey our sphere is still hanging out falling sphere uh, didn't get the proper keyframe so let's let's get a keyframe on this dude basic visible and render on and let's go to here and say visible and render on uh, right and then say keyframe and then say visible and render off keyframe so now it should this dude should disappear falling sphere huh uh interesting visible and render oh it's because we didn't set editor so you know what let's just delete this track and do it a different way uh you know i'm i i tried something uh didn't work so uh you guys get to watch me mess up and then delete the track and we're going to do enabled. So we're going to fall down. Right around here, we're going to say enabled yes. I'm going to set a keyframe. Next frame, I'm going to say enabled no. Keyframe. Okay, now that should work. So this thing's going to fall in. Boop, disappear. Our spheres come up, and then they shrink down. So when they shrink down, we need a few things to happen. We need the metaball to turn off, and we need all the dynamics to fall onto the ground. So how do we do that? Let's go to our dynamic settings. And first of all, check the animation uh, on the sphere. It looks like frame 80 or so is when the dynamics fall. So somewhere right before that, let's turn off our follow position. Remember, our follow position, which is under our force tab on our dynamics, is what is keeping these spheres floating in their position rather than falling to the ground. Gravity isn't taking over. They're just kind of floating around. We've used this before in other tutorials. But in this case, we need to animate it off. So right around here, we're going to say follow position. We're going to do all these at once. I'm going to hold down command. I'm going to select uh, these two other dynamics um, tags. And you're going to see follow position has multiple um, things on it. That's OK. We could set a keyframe for all of them at once by saying command click. And then all the way, uh, maybe give it a couple frames. We're just going to set everything to zero, and we're going to say click it again we're going to set that up so now let's see what this looks like we're animating it falls boom and let's give our timeline a little bit more room i'm going to go to frame 200 here and i'm going to stretch out our timeline boom oh guess what we didn't do so we didn't add a dynamics tag to our backdrop so let's rewind this whole thing Let's go to our studio, let's open it up, and inside of Studio S, you're gonna see the geometry for Studio S. Uh, we're gonna go to Tags, Simulation Tags, Collider Body, and uh, we want this to be Shape Static Mesh. Okay, so now let's play, and now the sphere, boom, and then it's gonna fall, and they all fall on the ground. Sweet, that's it, so we did it. Okay, so one other thing we wanna do is add more friction to the system so they don't roll as far away. You can see when these spheres fall to the ground, they kind of like stay where they are. They kind of fall straight down and then they don't really go anywhere too far. And to do that, we can actually just go uh, onto our collision uh, settings and just turn up the friction, like high. We can go to 200 on those and on the spheres, we can go to like 100. And now when they fall, they should like stick more to the ground. They shouldn't kind of roll away as much. You can see they kind of have a lot of bounce, though. You can see they're kind of heavy compared to this one. This this looks a lot smaller in scale. When they fall, you could they, they look more like ping pong balls, like bloop, bloop, bloop. And these feel like bowling balls, you know? They, they feel heavy when they fall, bonk, real slow. 
And for that, we can change our dynamic settings. Hit Command D on your keyboard, and that's gonna pull up your uh, project settings. Let's open this up. And under the dynamics tag, you're gonna see time scale. We can just speed this up. Let's go to like double the speed, 200. And now when our dynamics fall, they're gonna fall to the ground and bounce more subtly. That's actually too fast. Let's try something like 130. Bloom, better. Cool, so that looks pretty good. And our spheres are actually falling and rolling. Now, there's one thing that's weird. The spheres are actually moving through the plane. Um, hold on, let's back up. There we go. The spheres are actually moving through the plane of texture, and you can see them kind of move texture when they fall, right? Do you see that? And ignore these guys for now. Those won't be there in the final. But you can see the textures like blah, 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 blah. We don't want that. And the way we're gonna get around that is we're gonna texture the sphere differently than the meta ball. So when we turn off the meta ball, it will jump to the sphere texture. We can use the same texture though. Let's just drag that on the sphere. And now you're gonna see, um, when we back up, let me move this off. When they fall to the ground, they're gonna be static textures. They're just gonna rotate around. That's what we want. But with the meta ball on, we want them to do this thing. Boom, right? So ignore all this extra weird stuff. We're gonna turn off the meta balls, and so let's go ahead and animate that. So somewhere around frame, uh, right when they're shrinking, we want to turn off the meta ball system. So somewhere around like frame 75, let's say, let's grab all of our meta ball systems, meta ball yellow, meta ball white, and we're gonna do the same thing, enabled, we're gonna say on, we're gonna say Keyframe, next frame, we're gonna say enabled off keyframe. Let's see what that looks like. Backup system, meta ball, meta ball, meta ball, meta ball, meta ball, snap. That's it, that's it. So now from here, all we're doing is tweaking the timing. We have our spheres and ignore the looping and all the weird stuff because we, we're not seeing it in in the final position. So here it is in our in our, uh, <clears throat> in our uh, render, our picture viewer, you can see we have our textures happening, we have our, our blob happening, <clears throat> and we're getting uh, closer to our final look, right? Okay, so we, we're having some GI uh, flickering issues. That'll go away when we saw when we choose um, uh, high instead of preview, but for now, this rendered very quickly. In fact, um, if we take a look at our render times, uh, let's see five seconds of frame, so you can't beat that for global illumination. All this light bouncing around, we, you can see the yellow shows up on the ground. This is this is pretty cool stuff, the way it's, it's handling this. Um, and it's rendering pretty quickly. In fact, let's just shrink our output a little bit more so we could see the whole thing at once. And uh, let's do another render. So let's say yes, new render, and see what we got. <clears throat> and uh, wow, it's turning into a a longer tutorial, but there's a lot of separate little pieces on this, and um, we got a lot more animation to do here. We got the uh, logo to actually to actually animate as well. Um, so we'll let that happen. We'll let that go and do what it does, and let's start to worry about that final logo resolve where this thing spins around. Now this thing is just that thing just kind of animates on. We're not going to worry about that. Uh, we're mostly concerned about. You can see this thing is just a scale up. You could do that in After Effects or just a, a plain uh, piece of geometry <clears throat> in cinema. But this thing, this thing rotates around. It's got a logo on it. It's got nice reflections and it's got a, uh, um, so it kind of animates and floats around. So let's build that thing. Let's build that dude. Uh, let's go to a new scene. So I'm just going to uh, open a new scene. I'm going to add a sphere and I want this to be a hemisphere. So let's go to hemisphere and uh, let's take the rotation and rotate this up 90 degrees. And uh, there's one piece, cool. Um, we're also going to uh, duplicate that and scale it up maybe just a little bit, 101. There we go. So that's the outside shell, and then we have the inside shell. You can see we have kind of two uh, different sized um, uh, shells here. We have the yellow one and the white one, so that represents both. And then in the middle of it, we have a plane. Uh, so let's grab our disk and uh, uh, orient it along the Z 
axis. That is not the Z. Uh, that is the Z. We just didn't orient the other ones. So let's grab those and rotate them around. Perfect. So now we're looking at it from the front. And uh, we have our disk in the Z axis. We can grab our other spheres and just kind of rotate them around and grab our bottom one, uh, which is this one. So yellow sphere and uh, white and disk. Let's grab the yellow one and rotate this in a little bit. So now we have yellow and then white and then the background. Okay, let's put this whole thing into a null. And uh, let's call this uh, our logo. Not lotto, logo. Boom. Okay, so I just I made this in a new scene just so we can do it without screwing anything up. Let's jump back to our other scene and paste it in and uh, scale it up, kind of bring it to scale uh, between the rest of everything. Let's grab uh, our tool here, and it's roughly, uh, roughly I'd say about this size. By the time everything falls, so let's just have everything fall. Boom, boom. There's our logo. And let's grab our existing textures. So we have our falling yellow uh, texture. We have our white outside texture. And uh, while we're at it, let's add the reflection to our falling texture. Remember, this is for this this yellow piece that falls down in the middle here, right there. So same, same thing. I'm going to add some reflection, some Fresnel, kind of knock it down with really low settings. Um, and that will have the same effect as this. Uh, and also our disk needs a new material, new material. And our disk will have a logo on it. Uh, so in this case, you could load up your own logo. You can go into Photoshop and make something, uh, put your face there, you know, do whatever you want. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go to the color channel and pick uh, uh, the Grayscale Gorilla logo, which um, this should be big enough, 15 by 15. It's just a JPEG and it's square. I'm going to open it up and uh, I'm going to bring it into my search path. And you can see it pops up right away on the disk, but because of the orientation, it's backwards. Uh, so we could do a couple things. We could grab our disk and just rotate it kind of 90 degrees or 180 degrees, I should say, um, which uh, 40 plus 40, boom, that should do it. Um, in your case, you might have to go into the actual tag and kind of scale it around and turn off tiling and, and position your logo. Um, in fact, uh, I could probably scale it a little bit and then reposition it. So if we go 86, 86, and then uh, offset it, I could kind of center this in the scene. Let's move a little bit further down and just have these get the heck out of the way. You can see it's getting cut off by this edge. Um, so in fact, maybe we just shrink this down a little bit more. Uh, yeah, let's say 75, whoops, 75, 75, boom. And then we could just offset it over. We could turn off tiling. We don't want the tiles. And uh, move it down, move it over. And now we have our centered logo, <clears throat> which has all the texturing. It's got all the, all the stuff on it. Uh, and... Um, because of the tiling situation, we can actually uh, just drop a new texture under this logo, which is identical except for the color. So let's just grab it and let's go color um, clear, make it white, and drop it under our disk so we don't have that square anymore. Let's see what that does. Make sure we're okay. Perfect. So now we have our logo, we have these spheres. You can see even the GI is making that a little bit yellow on the outside. Uh, we do have to turn up our geometry quite a bit on our spheres. So let's just make this something really high, something like 100. Let's do another render. And now we're getting somewhere. Okay, so let's do the animation for it. In the same way as the rest of it, let's just kind of pick where the, the, um, the sphere is going to kind of be visible somewhere around there and boop we can animate it on so first of all we want that logo to kind of appear maybe scale up so let's grab our logo let's grab our coordinates and say okay by this position you're going to say scale one and then we'll back up we're doing a lot of backwards animating we're going to back up and go zero 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 and we're going to say until then get the heck out of the way so now it's going to scale up okay and then um, you can see it's not hanging out here. Uh, let's back up all the way. Not hanging out. 
And then by the time we make it visible, it's scaled up and it's ready to go. So now let's animate the disk and the, the spheres around to kind of give it this animation like that. And you can see in the final, that's exactly what it does. It kind of spins up and goes, and then it bounces around like that. So let's get that going. Um, let's say right around here, we're going to start the animation right when things start shrinking. So let's say uh, disk white yellow so by the time it's at about a hundred or maybe a little bit longer it's gonna be perfectly rotated the way we want it so let's just set keyframes for all these things all at once disk white yellow keyframed boom rotate 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 let's just set it and then let's back up and then set our rotation points around so now it's gonna be like this and our yellow one, let's grab our yellow one and make it more. And let's grab our disk and make it even more. So now we're having three different types of animation and we could set that keyframe. And in fact, we didn't really need these other two keyframes. We're only rotating in the in this green axis here and not in the other two. So we could just take those animations and say, delete track. Whoops. We gotta uh, isolate them first. Animation, delete track. Whoop. No, that didn't work either. Let's leave it for now. I'm sure there's a way. I think if I just highlight one of them, I thought if I just highlighted one, but I think if I have them all selected like that, they're all going to delete. I'm sure somebody smart out there is yelling at me, and I'll look that up as soon as I'm uh, uh, as soon as I'm uh, off off this tutorial. But for now, I think we'll just leave it as it is, and we have our rotation, and uh, we also don't have the spheres animating rotating so let's make sure yeah okay so that's rotating around let's grab our two spheres now separately and rotate them around like this boom and now we have this animation Swoop. and it's actually going backwards so let's just go back do this separately boop 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 good let's try that again and let's grab our white and yellow and let's go let's just do them separately to make sure this one's going this way boop animate white is doing the same boom maybe not as far uh-huh then we hit go that's it okay so um let's see what this looks like Ba blue and boom okay so it's a little late so we got to take our animations, disk white, yellow, the whole thing. Let's go to our timeline. Let's raise it up and go to our timeline and uh, and get those into our scene. So um, logo, dynamic spotlight, falling sphere. So it's not showing up. So this shows this happens every once in a while. You want to animate something up here that has keyframes. You can see it has keyframes here, but it's not popping up in your um, timeline. And under view, you can go to show, and uh, you could say, um, uh, sh uh, where is it? No, it's uh, link, link timeline to uh, um, timeline to object, uh, and I think that means object uh, menu or something like that. So link timeline to menu, and this means that when you select these, um, that they should pop up down here now with the with the rotation because it's in here um, you may have to open up and just open this whole thing so you can see logo it's here but you have to un kind of have to open it up um, with this plus button and now we have our timeline and you can see it's already selected so now if we only select one of the objects only one of the objects is selected here and this is what that view um, link does link timeline to object menu I think that's what that means and then when you select the objects it's actually selecting the keyframes as well which means we could take all these rotations and all this stuff that we're doing and push it back in time all together and in fact we could take our rotations here we could push those back so now it's spinning around a little bit more naturally so let's give it a play and yeah, it looks a little slow so we can grab these three and speed it up Cool. Now, we have the general animation. Um, there's always more tweaks we could do to make this uh, better and better, but in order to keep this tutorial a little bit shorter, let's um, take the logo and add our vibrate tag to it.
because it does have that kind of natural uh, wiggle to it there at the end. Let's watch that one more time. See it move around and kind of bounce around. So for that, that makes me think vibrate tag. Cinema 4D tags, vibrate. And then uh, we're going to say seed. Let's leave it at zero. Let's enable position. Maybe uh, uh, a little bit left and right, but mostly up and down, I would say, like 30, uh, 10. And the frequency is way low, like 0.5, much slower than, than the default. So let's see what that looks like. There you go. I can see it rotate. I'm also going to enable rotation and say, um, you know, like 10 degrees, 10 degrees, 10 degrees, and have it kind of wobble around and turn down the frequency a lot. So now you can see, broom, just kind of gives it a little bit of a float, like it's a like it's a hovercraft or like a hovering object here in the, in the scene. It's not static, and it just kind of gives a little bit of animation there. So um, this is getting there so let's do a let's do a quick render uh of this frame and see what this looks like and see what we need to do as far as lighting and all that stuff so if we look at our original um you can see one thing is is it's a little bit more blue in the background and it's a little bit brighter on the on the textures so let's go to our materials let's go to our site material and turn that back up a little bit let's turn up our studio rig uh hdri uh, to a brighter kind of setting and try to get a little bit more white whiter whites in there and um, that looks a lot better the vignette I would add in post see how it's like brighter in the center and darker in the corners I would do all that in post or in after effects uh, but we're getting some really nice shadows here um, maybe even a little bit more light and maybe a little bit brighter background just to uh, allow the vignette to take over more than make it too gray so that's looking nice and bright and white. Let's go back to our kind of uh, um, our sphere looking stuff here and give this a quick render. You can see it's going to be low res based on the settings, but uh, that looks pretty good. Um, it's also getting a little close to the floor. I think that's okay for the most part, but we have our spheres hang hanging out here and we have most of it there. So let's at this point, uh, get our render ready. Now, again, you know, based on how much time we have and how much time we've put on into this already, uh, you know, there's always more we can do. But there's kind of the 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 basics of it. So there it is. It's pushed out. You can see it's actually jittering a little bit. And to get rid of some of the jitter, you can go into our uh, sphere settings, and um, we could turn down the collision noise. We can also go to our dynamics general dynamics tag and turn up some of the um, expert settings things like steps per frame and uh, collision margin tend to help out a little bit with some of these um, jittery uh, spheres here and also toning down the follow position on your force instead of 10 maybe tone that down to something like five or so you, you're gonna have to set it in a keyframe which remember anything you're setting up as a keyframed element if you want to change it you can't just go type it in because it's not going to get set as soon as you hit play it's going to change uh, in fact it won't be set until you reset that keyframe so keep that in mind um, uh, but I think we're getting close here what I would do from here is turn up your resolution um, to something more proper for final output uh, you could uh, you could set your uh, uh, frame to all frames 0 to 200 instead of uh, just a, a, a preview um, also turn up your global illumination settings let's go to our global illumination settings and say interior high high diffuse depth uh, instead of the preview this will give us much nicer uh, GI and also our physical settings are default to low you can also turn these up to medium or hand type these in um, and these settings are very dependent on what you have turned on uh, and we can go over it more in depth in other tutorials, but know that, you know, we've gone through this in a lot of tutorials. Remember that that final render, you know, we can keep everything as low as possible so we can animate quickly. And then we want to come back in and turn up some of these settings um, so that our final render looks a lot nicer. So GI, of course, we're turning that up. Um, we're doing a lot of things. And uh, when we go to our picture viewer, and we say, okay, well, like, let's now render it. You're going to see our, our render times are going to be a, a little bit higher. They're not going to be too bad here because we have such a small uh, preview window. 
but our shadows will be more accurate. Uh, it's a little bright. Eh, maybe we turned up our 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 GI uh, a little bright here. Our HDR studio rig, maybe like one eighteen or something. And let's just reset it. And also, don't forget to save it out. Go, go to file and uh, export them as um, EXRs or TIFFs or whatever high resolution you want. 32-bit is nice, especially for compositing and get all this stuff out. Um, there's not a ton of post effects on this other than the uh, 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 vignette that I'm seeing and maybe a little motion blur. But uh, I would just leave it. Um, you know, we, we don't have to go in After Effects to show you that. You've seen me make plenty of vignettes and motion blur and other tutorials. And uh, you could add this thing in After Effects if you want or add it in cinema as well. And uh, so let's see. Here's our here's our first few frames with some nice shadowing, with some nice um, stuff here. And I also noticed another thing, which is it's sitting a little low in the frame. So, you know, maybe we want this to be a little bit higher uh, and, and just kind of have this framed up a little bit closer and more more higher in the scene and when we go back now it's kind of hovering up where where this original one is a little bit high in the scene like that so not a perfect recreation um you know this looks a little more blobby than this thing you probably do with less uh white spheres uh the dynamics aren't perfect you know i think we though got the gist of it you know all everything from now um is 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 just making tweaks to make it more and more like this but the reason i do these kind of tutorials isn't to necessarily emulate this perfectly although that's what the exercise is um recreating this perfectly isn't really doing much to uh to our portfolio you know we can't render this out and say it's ours this is his work this is their work and uh we're instead we're using this to learn some techniques and and we're looking at something that we think is pretty um, and something that we think is cool and trying to rip it off exactly for the purpose of learning how to do nice work and not necessarily um, to uh, to steal this or whatever, right? So what we're doing now is we're we're, we're trying to make this perfect because we, we love this, the way this looks, uh, the way that you would, you know, try to play a Beatles song perfectly because you like that song. Uh, but that song's not yours, right? So, but by, by, by playing this and learning this, uh, you're now, you now know how to turn on and off a metaball system. You know, you now know how to take two metaball systems dynamically and, and, and shove them together. You know how to animate some really basic, um, settings here with spheres and, um, and uh, handle some uh, dynamic stuff. You you now know some of the new global illumination settings. So you know, take something that you think is is beautiful, um, especially something short like this, and, and try to make it as close as possible to the final. And um, I think we have enough here where you can start to tweak little things, things that bother you, and turn up some of the settings and and sh reduce some of the spheres and do all that stuff. Thanks again for watching everybody. And hey, don't forget to sign up for our Intro to Cinema 4D series. Head on over to our website, I'll link it up down below and you can get started with over 30 hours of Cinema 4D training. All right, thanks as always for watching and I hope to see you in another video here on YouTube or over at our website really soon. Keep learning, keep rendering, and most of all, keep having fun with all this stuff. And I'll see you in another video really soon. Bye everybody. Metaballs. 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 Metaball. 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 Something's wrong with me.